Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Toya devices for local control within Home Assistant. So let's get into it. So this is the next video in my series of jumping into the rabbit hole that is Home Assistant. If this is the first one that you've seen uh, in the series, I suggest you go and look at the playlist uh, on the channel uh, to catch yourself up on all the things that I've been doing there. Certainly there are two videos that everybody who will want to um, make their uh, Toya devices locally controllable via Home Assistant, uh, you know, that you'll need to watch from that series. So I guess the first thing is, is why would you want local control of your uh, smart devices so obviously this video is going to focus on Toya smart devices but you know obviously you know this applies to all of them so you know for me there's three kinds of things I think the first one is security um, you know smart devices seem to do an awful lot of uh, talking backwards and forwards this is something you know you see lots of comments on with regards to that um, you know certainly things like bulbs you know you think well you know it's just turning on and off surely that can't be a lot of data um, but you know these things are constantly checking in and uh, you know back to the cloud servers with the um, you know the, the platform that you hooked up to and you know ultimately if you are somebody who takes security um, you know uh, very very seriously then you know you probably want some kind of local control on that uh, you know we've all seen the stories uh, of, of things like smart cameras uh, you know in, indoor smart cameras where cloud platforms have been hacked and people have been able to uh, view people's cameras and stuff like that. So, you know, there's just there's a lot of reasons why you might want local control of your devices. You can do some of that by um, blocking them talking back out onto the network, um, you know, and uh, segregating them on your network from all your other devices as well. So lots of things there that you could do and combine them together. Um, I guess the you know the, the thing is is you've got to choose the right thing for you. Uh, with local control, you know there are other uh, benefits as well. So one of those is something I'm experiencing at the moment, oddly enough, and that is the response time of devices. So for months, my bulbs and other devices have been working perfectly fine. Um, you know, been turning on and off as and when I've asked them to, or whether they're on some kind of automation, some uh, setup, something like that. Um, but I now have one bulb, yes, one bulb out of the entire group uh, that has decided that it doesn't want to turn off uh, when the rest of the bulbs are turning off. So, um, you know, it's a real pain. The switch is right down the back of a bookcase, which makes it really difficult to go and manually turn it off. Uh, you know, which is all very 1980s, uh, but you know, it, this this bulb either responds in about five minutes, or you know, it could be two minutes, something like that. But ultimately, it doesn't respond when the rest of the bulbs turn off. Uh, if I go into the uh, Home Assistant app or I go into the Smart Life app and toggle that bulb, uh, then it just toggles back on again. So there's obviously some kind of communication issue uh, happening on at the cloud end with my uh, my particular device there and the third option is is what happens when the cloud goes down so you know we've all had this kind of like drummed into us in a certain way you know cloud's great it's got resilience and all that kind of stuff um, but uh, you know that is true to a certain uh, certain point but what happens if the uh, the kind of like the owner the the manufacturer of those devices that platform uh, ships out an updated version of their software that ultimately goes and uh, you know, deploys incorrectly or breaks or something like that, and um, you know maybe they've got delayed downtime whilst they're they're upgrading their internal systems. And this is what happened last year to me with uh, the Smart Life platform. Uh, very late in the evening, basically, you know, me uh, and probably an awful lot of people around the world that relied up upon the uh, cloud centres. Um, you know the data centers where, where things were actually installed and we were connected to basically there was no response from them so you know couldn't turn bulbs on couldn't turn bulbs off and again you know very much 1980s going back and turning things off manually and leaving it until the morning yeah and that went on for uh, quite a while that um, you know good good few hours where devices weren't responding so Having local control of your devices uh, certainly will give you those three uh, benefits. 
uh, you know, there are probably trade-offs from uh, that as well, um, but you know, the, the benefits far outweigh any kind of disadvantage uh, that somebody could come up with regards to that. So this video is going to focus on my Toya devices running under Smart Life and, and Home Assistant. So um, basically, I've already done a video on setting up those Toya devices and the integration with Home Assistant. The link's up above if you want to go and watch that video. If you've not done that before, you're going to have to do that before you continue with this video. Um, it is a very straightforward process. Uh, but it would just make this a very, very long video if you um, if I had that content included in this. So go and watch that video first and then come back into this video. So we're going to log into our Tuya platform and go to our cloud option. And uh, there will be our cloud project we've created previously. As you can see, mine's there. And uh, just click on that and then go through to devices and you should then have a list of the devices that you've previously configured. Uh, we're going to need to take a device ID, so I'm going to take the office mood light that I've got here, um, and we'll, uh, we'll start setting that one up for the local Toya integration. So just copy that device ID and then click on API Explorer. That will open up a new tab for you, and uh, you want to move down to General Device Management. And then there is an option here, which is get device information. And there's a little box where you can type in that device ID. So you just paste that into the, the one that you're going to copy it, click on submit, and then you'll get um, basically what's called a JSON object uh, in the response from that. Uh, now, don't worry too much about all of the detail that's in there. What you're looking for is the local key parameter. And uh, you can see that there, I've highlighted that there. So you're gonna to need to copy the value there uh, ready for use within Home Assistant. So once you're back in Home Assistant, you need to go into your hacks option. Uh, if you've not got that installed already, then uh, click on the link up above. There's a video uh, that I've done previously on how to install that. Um, but once you've gone into there, then you need to go onto the explore and download repositories option in the bottom right hand corner and type in local Toya and that will come up with this uh, particular um, add-on that you can install. So lots of details on here, what's supported in terms of devices um, from this project. So make sure you read all of that documentation before you install it. Uh, some interesting bits there, certainly if you're gonna use it with uh, YAML. Um, for the purpose of this video though, I'm just gonna click on the install, uh, the uh, download and install option um, at the bottom in the bottom right hand corner. So just uh, leave all the options as the default there with the, the current version, that should absolutely be fine. And just click on the button to install it. And it just takes a few seconds and then um, you'll see there it says, you know, it's pending a restart. So you're gonna to need to go into settings and uh, into system. Certainly if you're using newer versions of Home Assistant, you can then just click on restart in the top right hand corner. And we'll just wait for Home Assistant to uh, restart itself and, uh, and then you should be ready to carry on with the rest of the process. So once that's done, if you just go back into uh, Hacks and just make sure that you've got that uh, fully installed there in your uh, integrations, you should just see that you've got local Toya there. You don't really need to do anything else in that part, uh, but you come back out into Settings and then Integrations and you should um, then click on the add integration button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and then just search for local Toya uh, and there you see it's at the top of the list. So you just click on that and uh, give it a few seconds whilst it sets things up and then it's going to ask you for uh, what device you want to uh, start configuring. So it will come up with all the ones that it's going to detect that you've already got configured. So you just need to match up that, um, that device ID uh, with the appropriate device that you've got in the system. So I'm just gonna skip back onto the Toya platform just to match that up there. And then uh, just when I've got the right one, just click on Submit, and I'm gonna give it a, a new name. So I'm gonna call this Local Toya Mood Light. And then uh, I need to give it Local Key. So this is the, uh, the, the value from uh, that piece of JSON that was uh, in the Toya uh, dashboard so you just need to copy and paste that into here and uh, just click on all the other options just click on through on that 
and then uh, it's going to ask me what type of entity this is so you need to make sure you choose the right one for the device that it is so this is a light um, so uh, you know I've chosen a light option here and then I get a new pop-up which has got all the different um, uh, en entities for the, the uh, all the different properties for the entity type of a, of a light so um, lots of different things there I'm just going to stick the basics in give it the same kind of name the local uh, Toya uh, mood light and then um, you know if I wanted to I could add some more uh, extra values onto that but I'm just going to leave that as is because obviously you know there's a lot of configuration you can do depending upon your device so um, just click uh, submit on that and then I'm going to set this area at this point in time I'm going to stick this in the office um, and you, as you go back to your integrations part of your dashboard you'll see there that I've got one device and one entity I click on that and I have my local Toya mood light and uh, I've got, uh, you know, as you do with all kind of uh, lights and switches, I've got a little toggle switch there, so I can click on that and uh, it will turn it on and off. Um, so, you know, you can see me clicking it here and the light coming on and off. It really is instantaneous. So that's it. That's all you need to do to get that set up on your system. So there you go, a really simple, straightforward process. Certainly if you've gone through the previous videos as well. Um, now I've got local control of those Toya devices. The response time, it's instantaneous. It is a good couple of seconds quicker than using on the cloud. And obviously I now have that, uh, that you know, local control and the, the local resilience. So it's all on my network now. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. Love to hear your comments, uh, you know, your feedback on this. You know, have you gone down this route of the local control of uh, your Toya devices or any other devices? on your home assistant network you know let me know down below in the comments and um, you know if you have enjoyed this video then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're um, not already a subscriber for more content like this uh, but as always uh, thanks for watching the video and i'll see you in the next one bye for now